Welcome. We put a, another video together that uh, followed the previous video. If you remember, we had a little bit of the video that showed you how to assemble these um, headway cell holders, or at least these black ones. A little bit of a trick to them, but once you get that trick down, they go together pretty easily. It's just a little bit time consuming. But this ties into a little bit of a... Um, another project that we have going on as far as expand either expanding our capacity on the existing um, lipo battery bank or lipo 4 battery bank as some would call it um, and or possibly making this a separate uh, battery bank for what will be the solar system that will eventually go in the garage and that'll be an additional series as well in which we covered the existing solar system exterior and then we'll cover the install of the solar system that will go on the garage as well as tie into uh, a garage series that kind of goes over the construction of the garage uh, what we've added to it and what we continue what we will add to it in the future just to maybe give some of those that are thinking about building a garage like um, ourselves were uh, some ideals about you know things that you may want to do such as you know lighting and uh, getting the floor coated with epoxy things of that nature but let's get back to the meaning for this video is that um, we hinted in a couple of other previous videos that we had a special project going on and that project that you see here involves 160 of these red headway cells now these cells are eight amp hour or another way of saying it would be eight thousand milliamp hour cells and we got all of these to include the holders and the bus bars that you see here all came from battery hookup a few months ago we've just now gotten to the point that we can start processing these cells and putting them together in the packs of 10 that you see here so and the capacity we're getting is anywhere between about six amp hours per cell and eight and so what we're doing is we're uh, discharging and then charging the cells figuring out our capacity and then assembling the packs with like cells so once we get a pack of 10 together of either six or eights we finish putting the holders on as you see here and then we attach the bus bars so it's kind of a tribute to those individuals and a lot of other videos I watched in which they'll get the what's known as the 18650 cells and they'll break those out of modems and old uh, power packs for power tools, things of that nature. And then they will power test each cell, discharge and charge test, and then sort the cells accordingly to capacity uh, and then assemble packs from there. So it's the same process we're doing here. We're just using a significantly bigger sized cell, which you can see. So someone may test the typical 18650 and it may come back at 22, 2300 milliamp hours. Uh, just think of this as being the exact same, just a little bigger. And these would be what you would may consider or what we're testing, testing on anywhere between six and 8,000 milliamp hours or six to eight amp hours. It's literally saying the same thing. And what you can see, what we started doing here is when we took all 160 cells and we voltage tested them first, grouped them together by like voltage counts, as you can see from the little scraps of cardboard here and the, the holders themselves. Once we had that established, and you can see the majority of them came in right about the 3.29 volt range. So this pack you see here, as well as all of these you see here all came in at 3.29 volts we then are hooking up each one and it's a little bit of a process we got a single iCharger X8 we're in the process of doing a discharge test to this particular cell here so we got our main clamps and our main positive main negative and then our voltage sense leads because this is an 8 x8 which means it's an eight serial charger we're only using the first serial uh, first monitoring port as you can see here obviously because we only have one cell but this has been the process thus far we do a complete discharge test 
then we do a, a recharge test, take the reading from the recharge, and then group the cell accordingly. Again, once we get 10 of the very close, we'll put them in a pack like this, and then we'll start adding the bus bars. Now, there's different types of bus bars that you can get online. I've seen them for headways. I've seen the bus bars you see here, which come from battery hookup. And there's also a, a couple other outfits that are selling the full metal like square plates. But uh, I don't know if these will, I don't know if those would work with these black cell holders. I'm assuming they will because the dimensions should be the same. But typically, when you see an individual with the big metal plates, they're also using the orange cell holders, not the black ones. Again, I'm not sure if there's any difference between the two, but this is what battery hookup had. This is what we're going to use. And, and so far, these are working just fine. And that, what we have powering the eye charger is this little external HP server power supply that we showed in a previous video. It will, I'll link it in the description just to make it easier to find. It shows the modification that was done to that to get that to work as basically a, a standalone power supply at 12 volts. And you can see that we do have an external resistor array for that eye charger as well for doing larger packs when you want to basically uh, pull more than uh, this thing is capable of a 30 amp uh, discharge. There may be cases where you want to go higher than that. And even the manual for the eye charger suggests an external bank of uh, resistors. And these are the 1 ohm. And I want to say these were these were 50 watt or 100 watt. I think these were 100 watt 50, uh, 100 watt 1 ohm. Sorry, 100 uh, 1 ohm resistors. And we've got 10 of these which are attached to an old heat sink you see here. The compound we used was Arctic Silver Alumina. And again, this is not the heat sink compound made by Arctic Silver. This is made by Arctic Silver, but this is a thermal adhesive. So it acts like a thermal compound. It'll help transfer heat from the resistor to the heat sink, but it's adhesive. So basically, do not use this Arctic Silver Alumina on anything that you want to attach to that you then maybe want to remove later on. It'll make it extremely difficult. You know, we knew we weren't going to remove these resistors from this heat sink. Uh, therefore, we had it, we use it. Like I said, it is a really good thermal compound. And you can see that we just have 10 of these attached in parallel. That resistor bank then gets attached in series with a positive lead of the battery bank or the battery or battery bank that you're testing. And then on your discharge settings for your eye charger, there's a setting you have to enable to basically tell it that you're going to be using that ex external pack. We won't go into that here. There's plenty of other videos on YouTube. Lithium Solar, for example, has some uh, very nice videos that kind of shows the settings of this. There's another individual, uh, Average Joe, uh, that also uses an X8 as well as HB Powerwall and links to all of their channels will be in the description. But it's a slow process with a single eye charger, but we're, we're getting them taken care of here. We've got four completed packs you can see here. We have another pack here that we need to add bus bars to. And the goal of this, um, as with uh, since we run a 48 volt battery bank, these are 3.2 volt nominal LiPo 4 cells. Uh, we need 16 of these packs to get up to the same battery bank voltage that we're using now uh, in order to give us that 48 volts that we're looking for. Again, whether this gets used in the main system that's in the house or we use this to power what will be in the garage system, even the inverter we've chosen for the garage which was built by Genetry Solar, and his link is in the description, is also still a 48 volt inverter. So it's going to be a little bit of a slow process. You can see we've gotten some cells done. We have quite a few more cells to go, but I wanted to get an update out there. You may be able to hear that the cooling fan on this iCharger X8 is starting to go bad. The bearings in it are starting to make a lot of noise. You could hear that. We've ordered the replacement cooling fans for this. 
and we will have a video that shows disassembling this and replacing a fan. Now Lithium Solar has already done this, that's where we got the uh, information that we needed in order to do the replacement ourselves, but we'll, we'll also be doing a video on that. So it should be quite interesting. We've picked out a fan that has you know, a little bit higher uh, rotation speed and CFM, but has the same current draw. So it should help keep this a little bit cooler and obviously a lot quieter than what it sounds like now. But it's a lot of work for this little eye charger here to go through and diagnose 160 of these cells. And, and you may be thinking, why build a battery bank using these headway cells when there's much more economical, easier ways of doing this, especially with LiPo 4, you could just get yourself some uh, you know, 60, maybe 80, maybe 100 amp hour uh, cells, hook 16 of those in series and kind of get what you need. Well, you know, the point behind this was to try this as a little bit of a project as well as pay a little bit of respect to those individuals who do go through the considerable amount of effort that it takes to take you know, old recycled uh, laptop battery packs, get the 186050 cells out, uh, charge them, discharge them, capacity test them, assemble them in packs. It is, it is considerable amount of work to do that. So this is basically our uh, salute to them uh, to be able to kind of do the same thing, but use a LiPo 4 cell in its, in its, uh, in its replacement. Uh, there's also a, there's also, there's several LiPo cells out there on the market that'll kind of do the same thing. Uh, but a lot of those I've seen are kind of in the two to three to amp hour range. These are in the eight amp hour range. Now, what's special about the red headway cells is that these can support a massive amount of uh, continuous current drain. I want to say they're upwards of 180 or 200 amp uh, continuous drain. It's either continuous or surge. Uh, don't quote me on that, but uh, the red cells are capable of uh, significantly higher uh, continuous draw as well as burst draw. Uh, they also make a blue cell from what I've seen that are in the neighborhood. I think they're a 10 amp hour cell instead of eight, but they're not rated for as high discharge as these red cells are. Uh, since battery hookup, ha they do occasionally, uh, routinely have these available and their price is by far better than anyone I've seen on the internet. Uh, hence why you're seeing roughly, you know, a little over 160 of these cells here so give them a shot but uh, that's it just want to throw away you know not really a quick update uh took about it looks like we're about 13 minutes in here but that is the process and as we get further into this and we get the packs complete we'll be doing additional videos where we do a charge and discharge test on the full pack uh, once they've been done like this and they've been hooked together uh, we're going to leave them. We're going to leave them together. That way, the cells have time to equalize amongst all ten in each pack. Once we have all sixteen packs together, then we'll do a discharge and a, and a charge test, basically a capacity test of all sixteen. Make sure that we don't continue to find any anomalies. And we have found some anomalies. It's it's going to happen. They're used cells. We've run into a couple of cells that were only three amp hours. Uh, we had one that wouldn't discharge or charge at the full rate. Uh, so anything that's questionable, we're kind of taking them out of the process, so to speak, and just kind of pushing them off to the side. So they won't be cells that'll end up in any pack. Uh, but that's it for the update for now. And I'll chat with you all later.